Hello and welcome to the Gym RPG Show. There's a report on videocards.com about a rumor for Intel's Core i9-11900K, which is also known as Intel's Rocket Lake S CPUs that are due out in quarter one of 2021. And it's been a while since we talked about Intel CPUs, and that's most likely because there's been so many AMD and NVIDIA products recently, but I'm glad we're talking about something else for a change. So we're going to go through that information in the article first, and then I'll give you my thoughts on Rocket Lake S. Now remember, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. So videocars.com reports that David Beepo tweeted out some Rocket Lake S information today about the frequency the i9-11900K boosts to. It says the flagship Rocket Lake S CPU has a single core thermal velocity boost frequency of 5.3 GHz. The leaker also reveals the CPU has an all-core TVB frequency of 4.8 GHz, while the single core frequency is identical to the 10th gen core flagship Core i9-10900K, the all-core speed is actually lower by 100 MHz. Now, just as a reminder, Intel CPUs are actually capable of a number of boost frequencies, though this isn't available on all their CPUs. So the i9 is the only CPU from last gen with thermal velocity boost while the i7 has just Max Turbo Boost 3.0. So the assumption is that Intel will also offer the same on these Rocket Lake S CPUs. Now, there's three types of boosts. The first one is a Turbo Boost 2.0, which is available on all the Intel CPUs, and that's a single core boost. The Turbo Boost Max 3.0 is a boost applied to two cores, so it's like a dual core boost. And single core thermal velocity boost takes the faster of the two favored CPU cores to a boost higher than Turbo Boost Max 3.0. Let's take a quick look at the features of Rocket Lake S, and as you can see from these official slides from Intel, Rocket Lake S is now based on the Cypress Cove cores, and I'm sure a lot of Intel fans following would already know this. Rocket Lake S is going to feature 8 cores and 16 threads, but it's going to have a double digit IPC, or instruction per clock, improvement over Comet Lake S. It'll have a new memory controller capable of up to DDR4 3200 MHz, PCIe Gen 4 off the CPU, and more CPU PCIe lanes, and improved integrated graphics that's up to 50% better performance, which we saw in the integrated graphics from the Tiger Lake mobile CPUs already. Now, some people might think that Rocket Lake seems to be going backwards when Intel is only offering 8 cores and 16 threads, which is only a mid-tier CPU if you compare it with the number of cores AMD is offering. And technically that's true, and I think Intel is conceding a little bit of ground here, because they know they can't replicate that multi-core performance with their current design, but they can still compete in terms of having strong single-core performance. So that's why we're seeing a reduction of cores from 10 cores to 8 cores, but in return these cores will be faster. And ultimately, as games still demand strong single core performance, the Rocket Lake CPUs can still fulfill a segment of the market. So I don't think most gamers will be buying the 16 core Ryzen 5950X, but rather something like the 5900X, the 5800X, or even the 5600X. And the Intel i9-11900K and the i7-11700K can still compete effectively in this area as long as the price is right, and especially if they offer the fastest performance. And by all accounts, if they hit the double digit IPC increase, they should overtake the Zen 3 CPUs. So there's a lot of people out there mocking Intel's recent regression, and I do agree they've lost their premium status a little bit, but I think they'll at least add some competition and force AMD to improve their products again with Zen 4. I think the only downside to Intel at the moment is that the power consumption is still much higher than Ryzen. So for Rocket Lake, power consumption will be similar to Comet Lake and an i9 when overclocked could still do 250 watts to 300 watts, which means you have to spend more on cooling like an AIO 360mm and have to worry about the case size and airflow. For Ryzen's, many air coolers will do the job just fine and that can save some dollars. 
So that's going to be it for this one. It's a bit of a short one, but let me know what you think about these Intel Rocket Lake CPUs. Are you going to get the Rocket Lake CPUs or are you going to stick with AMD Zen 3 or wait for Zen 4? So if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.